Hey there folks, Brandon Schaefer. Welcome to another video, uh, drawing series video. I appreciate you watching these videos. Hope you've been learning a lot. I'm trying to do the best I can with these videos and just add so much content in them. Uh, anyway, I'm going to use a 2B and a 3B um, today, most likely. Uh, we'll see. This one's going to be about some shading techniques and, and how to shade and and just addressing value and some of those problems. Um, and I'm just going to do it on simple shapes here because that's all everything is. It's kind of just simple shapes that you break down. Um, so like spheres, cubes, cones, cylinders, etc. Um, so let's start out with a, a sphere because that's usually a, a tough one to do. So we have a circle or a sphere somewhat kind of messy. Um, I'm trying to zoom in there. So we have a sphere. You can clean it up if you want. Or draw it a little neater. I try to just draw quick for these videos. I don't want them to be super long. Anyway, so there's a sphere we have. Not bad. So here's what you can do if you want to Clean it up. Give me a second. Get your eraser out and just clean up some of these lines if you wish. Just remember to draw lightly, really lightly. That's the, that's the key to everything. I have to draw kind of dark just so it'll show up on the video here for you guys. But remember, when you're sketching, it's kind of the structure. It's kind of the bones of the of the of the the final drawing. So you don't want to sketch really dark. You want it to be really, really light. You know, really, really light. It, it's just the structure of the drawing. So keep that in mind. Or painting or whatever you're going to create. Drawing is really the foundation. That's why I'm doing this series. It's the foundation for any kind of art that you want to get into. Watercolor, painting, pastels, etc. So, some, some shading techniques. Now, for... Now, to do a darker shadow, I'm going to use a higher number on the Bs. So get into the three Bs. You can get in four, six. You can even go to eight, you know, if you want to do really dark. I'm just going to do a three B here. I may go a little darker, actually, um, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, four B. So, let's say the light source is up here. You know, we've been through this before. So for shading, let me try to get in here a little closer. You want to start out light because you can always go darker with it. So you really have to be aware of your pressure. And you just want to make it an even... You want to try to get an even coverage as possible. And just rub it on. You know, really lightly. And the pressure gets lighter and lighter as you go on. Because the darkest part's gonna be over here if the light's coming from up here. So now I'm gonna go over back, go over it again a little darker. So now I'm applying a little bit of pressure. Getting some more of the lead down, or graphite. And then just try to blend it out. You don't want any harsh lines. Now, this takes a lot of practice, a lot of a lot of time put in. That's why I said to play around with your, your pencils and really, you know, try to play with, around with them every day. Uh, draw as much as you can, you know, 20 minutes or something. Just try and, and, and really start shading stuff. Set up a nice little still life in your house, which I'm going to do that in a later video. Set up a little still life and uh, we'll go over how to how to handle it. So there you can see it's kind of uh, fading out there. I'm trying to make it as soft as possible. So one way to shade, you can do like what I'm doing, and you can leave it rough like that, um, you know, and slowly fade this out. You can blend. The, I mean, the the ways are endless. I wouldn't really re recommend using your finger, but some people, 
you know, when I was younger, I used to like rub this with my finger, and you can rub it out, and uh, you won't have a harsh line there. Uh, some people use a tissue. You know, it, there's many different wet things you can do to kind of rub the graphite in. Uh, one thing you can do is use these blending stumps. That's what these are for. Um, a lot of people never knew what these were for. When I was younger, I didn't know either. Never used this in my drawing kit. But now I've learned what they're for. Um, and what, what you do is you start on the darkest part and you just rub it in. Here, let me get closer. You want to really see this. So you can see it's all rough. It, it didn't get into like the tooth of the paper. It just kind of, you know, there's some texture to the paper, so it, it creates this texture. And what this does is kind of, it gets rid of that. It rubs it in. And you want to be careful with this too because it gets really dark on the, the blending stump. And if I were to rub that here, you know, it's like using a pencil. So be careful. But I go to rub this in. And I can kind of blend it out. You know, I haven't used these much. I have before. Um, not much though. This isn't really my style, making it super smooth like that. Um, but you can achieve some nice effects. It's also going to take a lot of practice to get used to. But you can do a lot of things. So there you go, that's a lot smoother than it was. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But I just want to show you the technique of how you can use this. Um, so that's one way to shade. You can do it like that. Um, I mean, of course, you want to add a shadow, make it look realistic, etc. Um, I'm not really going to go too in depth of it. But, you know, there's a shadow here. Usually there is like a, a part down here that would be, you know, maybe like this this value here for some reflected light uh, depends on what it's sitting on but the shadow is never usually as dark as the actual object the shadow is usually a little lighter like I said it depends on what it's sitting on but it is going to be darker toward the actual object so there we go um, just one idea for or, uh, or one technique for shading. So that's one way to do it, or two ways to do it actually. You can use the blending stump or you can just leave it raw, graphite the way, you know, like this, untouched, or you can make it a little smoother, blend it out. Um, you know, I could get it a lot smoother than this if I wanted, but for demonstration purposes, that's, I mean, that's a nice looking sphere um, with a really bright spotlight on there. Now, Something else you can do and play around with them, which is fun to do with um, just quick sketches. You know, this is more of like a finished drawing almost, you know, really detailed. Um, it's not usually my style. I like doing a lot looser, especially when I'm, I'm sketching a lot more loose sketches. So let's say there's another sphere or whatever object. It could be anything. You know, you could, be, you could draw a guitar if you wanted. Um, just break it down into simple shapes and then, you know, start refining. Try to get the lines as close as possible. So there's another sphere, somewhat. And another cool thing you can do is cross-hatching. And you want to make sure, I mentioned this in the last video, about following the shape of the of the sphere. And what I mean by that is is the 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 3D-ness of it, the actual like right now it's just flat, it's 2D, there's no dimension to it. But by adding this, there's depth. And and you can see I followed this this shape, this curvature. And that's what you want to do. So let's say just for argument's sake, let's do something a little different and let's do the light coming from over here. So this is a light source. You know, there's a light beaming down on it. Uh, 
so you would probably want the the shadow to to you know the curvature to be over here so the cross hatching would you know cross hatching well let me tell you what cross hatching is it's doing different things it's drawing strokes like this and then crossing them so that's cross hatching very simple but here's where the the shading part of it comes into play is that you make them closer together when you make them closer together it gets darker and darker and the farther apart you make them can get lighter and lighter so there's a nice little gradient there you know and it doesn't have to be smaller I mean it could be longer and still be darker and then you gradually make them farther apart so there you go that's cross hatching now doing it on a curve you know becomes a lot more interesting so I'd probably want to follow the curvature of this sphere for the most part and then as they get down here you want to make them closer together and up here just farther apart you know to where they're not even there anymore and then you can also to make it darker you can cross them going following the curve the other way so that's one thing you can do So I hope this gives you some ideas. Uh, there's tons of different shading techniques. Uh, you know, this is just a few of them. These are kind of the main things that I use um, when I'm drawing. Um, you know, the most vital ways of shading. And you could even blend a mixture of the two, you know, fill some of this in. You know, you can just do scribbles. you know and make some some interesting uh, you know it's good for bushes or all kinds of things there's so many different things you can do you can just make little marks you know really small cross hatching to where you can't even tell if it's cross hatching or not so those are some things you can do um, you know I kinda do that sometimes I just kinda scribble like this um, you know, if I was shading this, I just, I would just shade it. You know, um, kind of follow the curvature as best I could. The scribble. You know, this is a quick sketch, so it's not anything that important. But if I'm just, you know, wanted a quick sketch for something, that's what it would look like. And this is more of a, you know, a, a really a study and important thing. Um, you can also do dots, which is really, really annoying, and it's mostly done with ink, <laughs> um, which is just making dots, um, like pointillism. And the closer you make them together, of course, the, the darker they become, or the eye sees it as a, a larger mass. Um, so you can do that too. Um, I find that to be really annoying, but if that's your thing, go for it. Um, Anyway, I hope this opens your eyes to some, some ways you can shade um, maybe a, uh, a cup or something. Or a mug, we'll say like a coffee mug. Or a teacup, something like that. So it's just a cylinder with a rounded bottom. So how would you shade this? Well, you could do it just like I did the sphere over here, make it really smooth. Um, let's say the light's coming from this way. Or you can just do cross hatching, simple. You can do these straight up and down, just follow this edge. Um, they're going to be closer together over here. And then just make them farther apart. And since the light's coming from up here, they're going to be shorter. They're not going to be up here. Just make them farther apart nice little gradient and then just follow the bottom curve there you go and there's also going to be a shadow over here you 
you know, this is like really messy sketching, but you can get as detailed as you want with it. You know, you can come back in and just do the raw graphite, just fill it in a little bit. Get darker with it. Use all your different range of pencils. That's what these are here for. Um, you can use, you know, you can use a 6B on this if you wanted. Um, and just get really dark. And you can get really dark. Um, and then just slowly fade it out. You know, switch back to a 3B or a 4B and just fade it out. Just work on trying to get it as realistic as possible. And usually most things aren't ever completely white, so you would even shade in the white side a little bit. But if you do that, just make sure that you have to make the darks even darker. And, and try to be sure of what is the whitest part, the lightest part of the, the actual object in real life. So once again, draw from life, start shading, start practicing, and, and just, you know, do the best you can. Eventually you can get to this level here. Um, you know, take a little more time than I did in this video and just do some shading. Play around with it. Um, start drawing hands and then start shading them. You know, just try to get... Light is what makes things look realistic. So when you start drawing the light, you're going to start getting these 3D shapes. And that's what you want. That's the important thing. Um, just keep in mind the, the non-existing, you know, or the uh, imaginary wireframes for which way to, to shade objects and, and just be mindful of the curvature of, of different objects and different living things uh, that you draw. So I hope this video was insightful. I do my best to make these. Uh, give, it videos, give it a thumbs up if you found this helpful. Um, like and subscribe if you wish to see more. I'd appreciate it. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care of yourself. Peace.